and welcome back to Hoops Lounge. We're the show where we make less decisions than LeBron James. My name is Mark Griffin, a.k.a. Montreal Mark. I'm joined by my partner in crime, Football Low, a.k.a. Sporting Phil, and special guest Ryan uh, McNeil from HoopsAddict.com. Today we are discussing King James and the free agency, agency domino effect of the last 48 hours, which has been insane in the National Basketball Association. Ryan, you are our guest on the show. What were your initial reactions to LeBron and the Sports Illustrated article saying, I'm going home? Um, I was initially shocked. I think it was Chris Sharon who was calling it all weekend, and I was like, oh, there's no way that Sharon of all people has this. And in hindsight now, I look at it, and I think it's a great move for LeBron James. It's more than just basketball, as I'm telling people, all my friends asking about LeBron. Because even, as you guys know, people who aren't basketball fans are talking about LeBron James right now. I'm trying to tell them, yes, it's good for him to return home after all the burning of his jerseys and all the hard feelings and that nasty comic sand surf uh, letter by, the, by Dan Gilbert. And, but what it means now is he can mentor Kyrie Irving and Andrew Wiggins and Anthony Bennett and Tristan Thompson, all those young guys. He can return home, which means a lot to him and his wife and, and his mom. So it's, for family, it means a lot. And I just think for his legacy, I, I think he'll have a chance to win some championships in Cleveland. It probably won't happen this season unless Kevin Love arrives, but – I just think big picture and more than just basketball, it makes sense. But also, importantly for a basketball player, it makes sense on the basketball court too for him. Phil, now you are an absolute guru of trades and transactions and free agency in the draft. Do you think Cleveland will be making more moves this summer to help appease the king? Well, it's interesting, right, because – I, I, I think those trades like Kevin Love and, and, and what people aren't talking about, guys like in Detroit, because they still have a glut of big men like uh, Josh Smith or Greg Monroe. So uh, one of those guys could be had maybe with a steal with a couple of pieces. But I think that's part of why LeBron James went not uh, – not only could he mentor these guys and not be seen as, you know, like I went to go with Bosch and Wade, I, like I'm the man on this team and mentoring this young team, but he realized that the future asset. So I think it – it's going to be a bit of a standstill with Minnesota. I think Minnesota is really going to hold out for Wiggins, and I think that LeBron James wants Wiggins to be on board because if, if you thought of what he was lacking there with uh, Miami in terms of the youth, athleticism, help on the wing to defend, he has all that now. Uh, but the thing is, I think they're missing something up front, so I could see things happening, but I wouldn't be too shocked um, uh, to see – a uh, combination of Bennett and Waiters moved. I mean, we're seeing that more and more, and maybe some future first picks, because, like, they have a ton of picks, and they have a ton of youth, so you don't really need both if you're developing. Like, as long as you're developing two, three guys, max, I mean, you don't even have time for more than that. Uh, you have to make those moves. Now, it's tough to say. I, I think Kevin loves the sexy name because he makes so much sense, and he said he will re-up there if that's happening. But... Um, uh, they have to bring in another big. I'm not sold that uh, that Bennett and Thompson and Varejao are championship are a championship front court just yet. Now, in terms of sexy moves, after LeBron made his move, kind of been a domino effect across the league the last 48 hours of just guys going all over the place. Ryan, what was the one move that kind of shocked you and intrigued you the most? Um, the one that I was shocked at is Chris Bosh returning back to South Beach. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I get the money aspect. I get the whole happy wife, happy life, because his wife and he are very happy with that lifestyle in Miami. But it was Houston. He could have returned home. He has friends and family there, which I guess for some guys is a, is a win and a lose. I think for Bosch, he wanted to kind of avoid some of that stuff. But he could have played it alongside Dwight Howard as a perfect stretch four. James Harden would have been a nice option. Um, on the wing, and I think Patrick Beverly is a great, gritty point guard, and then you would have had Chandler Parsons to, to stretch the floor, another three-point shooter. I think if Chris Bosh had gone to Houston, they would have been the Western Conference favorites ahead of even San Antonio, and now what Bosh has done is he's really upset Daryl Morey, because Daryl Morey thought he had a wink-wink, nudge-nudge agreement with Chris Bosh, and Chris Bosh is like, nah, I'm going back to South Beach. So, Phil, uh, Chandler Parsons is kind of twiddling in the wind. Uh, he had an offer sheet from, from uh, Dallas. It's still out there today. still uh, has not been matched, has to be matched by tonight's deadline. Houston, is Mallory going to re-sign them, or is he going to end up playing for the Mavericks? 
Well, it's interesting, right? Because they just signed Trevor Ariza to a four-year, $32 million deal. Um, so it looks like his replacement's there, but you could also uh, read into the tea leaves that what they're trying to do is just surround Dwight Howard with defense and three-point shooting. I think it'd be interesting to see either Ariza or Parsons try to play that four. Um, it'd be a little tough, but I think, well, it's just that there's so few other free agents that are happening right now. Well, I think they're really betting on Carmelo Anthony, at least giving them a look, um, and that looks like that's not happening. <laughs> so I think, I think at this point, uh, they're actually just going to roll the dice and go with those two guys in the wings and just hope for the best and realize they brought in a little bit of D, a little bit of veteran leadership. I mean, Oh, oh, we've seen Trevor Reese in the past after signing a five-year deal and being traded the first year into it. He doesn't always play the best after uh, getting his paycheck. But uh, um, I think Houston's scrambling right now. I think Houston had much gra much grander plans, and they realized, you know what, we lost Lynn, which was tough, uh, which Ryan alluded to. And and they're going to need a little bit more wing scoring because of that. So I, I think at $32 million over four years, not too big of an investment, not too, too bad. Um, but I think they have to sign him back because I can't see any guarantees to fill in those other spots at the four or the one just yet. So, Ryan, there's been a lot of interesting landings uh, in the East. I wanted to ask you, what are you thinking of Paul Gasol going to the Bulls? We talked off air, and I think we all agree it's the perfect situation for Paul Gasol and the Bulls. I know that Melo was target number one, and obviously he's going back to New York. But Pau Gasol with Joaquim Noah is the perfect complementary front court. And you have Taj Gibson as your third big, which is a great option off the bench. I suppose the Bulls guaranteed Taj Gibson he would start. I think Taj will understand coming off the bench next season due to Pau Gasol starting um, in, the, in the four for them. And I think Melo, as good as a scorer as he is, he still has some issues on the defensive end. And I think Pau Gasol isn't the best defender, but as a post guy, Joaquim Noah can kind of hide that a bit better than Melo on the wing and kind of having Melo on an island. And I think Pagasol has championship experience. He has how many rings with the Lakers? Two, three rings with the Lakers. Um, he brings that winning mentality. And I think Pagasol, in many ways, which might sound crazy, especially in his twilight of his career now, I think Pagasol is a better get for the Bulls than Melo would have been. Ooh. Phil, very interesting pickup by the Washington Wizards grabbing Paul Pierce. Is he going to make them a beast in the East? Well, it's interesting because obviously Trevor Ariza was a big part of their playoff push, so they were able to sign Gortat and they lost Ariza. Um, it's going to give them a little bit more scoring, uh, but I'm, I, I wasn't too worried with Washington in scoring, to be honest, between Nene, Gortat, Beal, Wall. I, I think it's an interesting pick. It brings some veteran leadership to a young team. Um, I think it's kind of a plan B. I, I'm kind of surprised they didn't offer similar money uh, to Ariza there, but I think, I don't know, uh, I always look at these players at the end of their careers when they're kind of playing for this random team here one one year, two years, and I'm always like, is this really how you want to go out? Because I don't know, like like Washington in the East, I can see, uh, depending how everything falls, being a top four team in the East, but is this really a better shot? I mean, I, I realized how Brooklyn was way over the cap and they were spending tons of money on everyone, but I I see it as interesting. It fills a need, but I don't necessarily see uh, I don't necessarily uh, necessarily see it pushing anyone over the top. Although uh, Ryan's last point uh, uh, to get Powell, it sounds like uh, Boozer's on his way out, and and that could be a very interesting pickup for a playoff team. Um, I don't think many people would be talking about that. Because uh, they're going to have to pay out or his contract, and then some team's going to pick him up. Carlos Boozer, uh, to all those teams that needed a power forward, we'll have to see. Uh, so, so, let me hear, so, sorry, Mark, one, one quick point uh, yeah. on Phil. Is the sneaky thing that Comcast, Sportsnet, and Washington is calling for right now is that Pierce on a two year deal was signed, so he'll be off the books in 2016. Supposedly, the Wizards, of all teams, think they have a shot at Kevin Durant. So they want to build around hypothetically, Durant, Wall, and Beal, which is scary on paper. It's kind of like a better version of Harden and Westbrook and um, Durant back at Oklahoma City. 
But hey, I, I don't know. That that's the conspiracy theory. They don't want to give a reason the money on a four year deal because they want two summers from now they want that that kind of money at the disposal to lure Kevin Durant back home. So yeah, the hometown boy. Maybe they could bring Grievous Vasquez with them. He's out in two years too, and they went to high school together in D.C. So that's that's really interesting. So another name uh, got to be mentioned: Isaiah Thomas uh, signed with Phoenix. They now have a thousand point guards under contract. But I'm going to wrap up with one last name, guys, that we have not mentioned yet today. And I wanted to ask you both quickly, where is this guy going to land? His name is Lance Stevenson. Phil. Oof, Lance, uh, that's an interesting one because if you look at Indiana, they're poised to make a big run in the East if they can get their things together, right? But we've heard rumors that they're quietly shopping Hibbert. So, I mean, if they – can bring everyone back and and coexist as a unit as they were for the first half of last year. They're in a great position to run the East, especially as uh, you know mm. Cleveland finds itself with its young, with its youth, and all the rest. But I don't know. I just think that some team is going to snatch them up for like twelve million dollars, where they didn't want to pay eight or nine. Um, I'm going to say a sneak another pick is like Charlotte again. I I just think those teams who don't have you know, anything to lose, it's kind of a, a win-win because Lance has an incredibly high ceiling. He just has to get his stuff together. And it just sounds like from what happened, they could play and be nice, but I I think it's going to be tough to mend some of those bridges in Indiana. And unfortunately, I think uh, Lance is going to get a lot of attention elsewhere. And I wouldn't even be surprised if Phoenix is one of those teams who tries to pull, like, a weird sign-in trade with Eric Bledsoe considering, like you said, all those point guards you got. Yeah, that's a good call. Ryan, I'm going to give you the last call for NC. Where do you think Lance is going to end up? Oh, man, you're killing me. That's the toughest question you give me all day. Um, I think the logical situation is, Charlotte, you mentioned, they can use that, that off off uh, off guard. A defender can take the pressure off a Kemba Walker. I think it's a great backcourt. But Lance Stevenson and the Hornets have shot that down. That's just not going to happen. So Dallas was in the mix. I think Dallas is a nice veteran team with some older heads that kind of can mentor him and kind of keep him somewhat calm. But the weird thing is the best situation for Lance Stevenson is Larry Bird. And Larry Bird is not leaving the Pacers. But I think that Lance Stevenson has, like you mentioned, burnt too many bridges, and his time as a Pacers come to an end. So he should stick with Larry Bird, and Larry Bird wants to keep Lance Stevenson. But but I can see um, him going with the Mavericks. That's going to be my bold prediction for Lance Stevenson. Well, the free agency saga always continues. It never stops. The NBA just never stops. There's Summer League 2. The game never ends. So uh, to wrap up, I just want to mention things we all have going on this week. I just made a new piece at, uh, uh, on the Naismith Moment on our YouTube page talking about how LeBron's decision is much, much bigger than basketball. Uh, Ryan, I wanted to ask you about uh, hoopaddicts.com and what you have coming up. Uh, besides laying on my hammock all week, I'm going to do some uh, more podcasts. Um, I'm doing some radio hits this week. Um, it's summer, so for me, I take it kind of easy with the site, but check it out. There should be some multimedia for you guys uh, and your listeners, watchers, to uh, check out. And uh, Phil, off the wire? Off the wire. So uh, anyone who's checked out the last couple, I'm switching up the format. It used to be just on Wednesdays now and trying to do it whenever news drops. So what we basically do is give you a breakdown of whatever the story was and five associated stories so you can get all your info, one-stop shop, basketball portal. So try to keep it fun, try to keep it short. And, uh, yeah, you can even see those in, um, if you're on your break at work and uh, you don't have to feel bad about it. So uh, between that and tons of summer leagues, so we're, we're going to be very, very active on Twitter. And as always – on hoopslounge.com. You can catch all of it and everything in between. If you want to reach out to any of us, any show ideas or anything you guys think uh, should be added, feel free to contributors at the top and all of our contact information can be had. All right, so I want to thank you, Ryan, for being on the show. We'll have you back on soon. And, uh, yeah, basketball never stops. Love the Canadian game. Uh, just keeps growing and growing. Love the NBA. LeBron just makes it happen. All right, so I'll throw it back to you, Phil, uh, to wrap up. All right, cool, guys. Well, like I said, uh, the contact information can always uh, be found at hoopslounge.com. And don't forget to subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel. So that's YouTube slash The Hoops Lounge to keep up to date and all the videos fed your way. And always keep the Twitter 
active. Um, uh, we'll have all of our Twitter handles, including Ryan's, in the description of this video, so you can give everyone a follow. Ryan's a great follow for everything, basketball and everything in between. He's a funny guy. So uh, we want to thank you guys for joining us again, and we'll catch you guys next time in the lounge. See ya.